is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2025 mercedes-benz gle 350 courtesy of mercedes-benz of hagerstown in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we're in this one today because there is so much fun tech in this thing plenty of luxury of course as expected from mercedes-benz and just flat out this thing is a good look looking SUV. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the 2025 GLE 350 will start at $64,350, which by the way is a $1,700 bump from the 2024 model year in case you were curious. But anyways, powering the beast is going to be a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a mild hybrid system, putting out 255 horsepower, 5,800 RPM, 295 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM. That power being sent to all four wheels. Yes, all wheel drive does come standard, but power sent to the ground through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters which of course you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in at approximately seven seconds flat with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 27 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel but so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our gla 350 do want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a silver kind of uh toggle switch i'm gonna call it it's labeled dynamic that stands for dynamic select drive modes will include eco comfort sport and individual adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straight away let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test i want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us here and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 gle 350 up to speed all right in three two one go instant love it Come on. that's fun yeah definitely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway the best part about that acceleration though is the fact that there was no kind of delay whatsoever when i initially hit the gas because a lot of times with turbocharged engines you have a little bit of turbo lag historically that's the way it's always worked but perhaps because of the mild hybrid system that mercedes-benz added to the gla 350 that was completely eliminated. It was almost an electric car type of acceleration at the be very beginning, not, not quite of course, but still incredible acceleration for the GLE 350. There was a smidge bit of delay to the paddle shifters, but honestly, I'm not sure who's gonna be using the paddle shifters in an SUV like the GLE 350 anyways, but. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So as expected, four-wheel ventilated disc brakes do come standard on this thing. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at an insanely impressive 118 feet. Typically, what I always say is anything in the one teens is a sports sedan number because it's true. Typically, in SUVs, you find mid 120s, quite honestly. That's right where you want to be with SUVs, if not the upper 120s. I've seen as bad as 139 feet, for example, in the Volkswagen Atlas. So, 118 feet, that's plenty fine. As far as braking feel goes, since there's nobody behind us here. It's great. It's a perfect braking feel for the GLE 350. So not too soft of a braking feel, not overly firm either. It's right where it needs to be. So 100% on point with the braking, but that touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. But my very favorite part about the GLE 350, or one of my favorite parts, I should say, the interior quality is amazing, but is an adaptive variable suspension comes standard on the GLE 350. So what that does is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So most SUVs don't come with that. And that counts for even the luxury brands. Most SUVs don't come with that. So the fact that the GLE 350 comes with that, that gives you the best of both world so as far as ride quality goes in my short little test drive here today Hagerstown has some incredibly smooth roads which I love so so far honestly it's been perfectly fine for one reason or the other so I don't have any issues there as far as steering feel goes it's actually pretty nice. It's weighted a little bit on the heavier side of things and that could be perhaps because I'm still in sport driving mode. Let's put it back in comfort here. 
Okay, so it's still kind of weighted on the heavier side of things. Honestly, I love the steering feel in the GLE because I like a heavier steering feel. It better helps point you with the direction that you want to go. The loosey goosey steering feels, there's just no emotion to them. So I like that there's a little bit of emotion here with the GLE. As far as cabin noise goes, this is the perfect test. We're going 50 miles per hour right now. I believe it's a very serene cabin here in this GLE, as expected from really any Mercedes Benz. So no issues there. Touching our rear visibility, I could see perfectly fine out the back. So you definitely should not have any issues there either. But on top of that, touching on forward visibility a little bit, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the GLE 350. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's got to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one last thing you got to worry about there. And with the pinnacle trim, which by the way, goes for $5,300, you will also get a head up display that we do not have with us here today. But essentially that would project your speed, speed limit and the safety features up onto your windshield. Better help assisting with forward visibility yet again but that pretty much rounds off the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 mercedes-benz gle 350 all right so here she is you guys the new 2025 mercedes-benz gle 350 finished in black yes that is the very creative color name that mercedes-benz assigned to this one so come on give it a little like uh black pearl or nightshade black or something creative i don't know but as always let's go ahead and start with where the the GLE is made taking a look at the VIN first character is the number four indicating that the GLE is actually built and assembled here in the US at least for us US customers so kind of interesting but let's go ahead and start up front on this one dual horizontal slat front grill <clears throat> as you guys can see that does come standard diamond block front grill though is going to come with the AMG line package I guess for $3,150 that's your typical Mercedes-Benz look up front at least in my opinion illuminated star is available for $535 I always like to mention that little option there there is a night package that essentially swaps out all of the chrome that you're currently seeing for gloss black that goes for $400 um, that includes the roof rails up top there as well front air curtains to the bottom corners if you go with the AMG line package at least then to the sides full led headlights so both low beam and high beam with led daytime running lights you get the automatic feature you also get automatic high beams as well so i love automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it automatically dims them back to low beams and when the vehicle is gone it automatically bounces it back up the high beams for you there so you never have to touch anything super convenient but one more additional thing i did want to mention touching on the headlights here is there is an adaptive front lighting system that comes with the pinnacle trim that I mentioned earlier. So uh, that's pretty cool because when you're going around a bend at night, the headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend. So you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or an alien or Sasquatch or whatever the case. So pretty cool there. But again, love the look of the front end. I think it looks dang good. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. That pretty much rounds out the front end though. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, and so but now since we are around to the side of the GLE 350, starting all the way to the top there, you will find those roof rails. They're gonna be finished in aluminum. That comes standard. However, they are available in gloss black like I just mentioned earlier, but satin chrome window surrounds do come standard. You're gonna find some satin chrome accents on those door handles as well. You got a little bit of chrome cladding behind the door handles there I noticed that rear privacy glass does come standard you got soft closed doors that goes for $550 in case you wanted that option but one of the differences I wanted to mention to you guys uh, whether or not you go with the AMG line package is if you don't go with it like we have today you're going to get matte black cladding on the side skirts and the fender surrounds however if you do go with the AMG line package you will get body colored accents for the side skirts and fender surrounds so a little bit different there of a look honestly I think in uh, black exterior it doesn't really matter either way it still looks good but anyways wanted to mention it nonetheless then taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored or gloss black side mirrors dependent upon the configuration that you go with they will be power adjustable they are heated you do get led integrated turn signals as well and they're actually power folding too so when you lock this one up they're going to automatically fold in for you there then take a look down at the wheel setup 19 inch alloys do come standard however there are 19 inch 20 inch and 21 inch designs all available to really customize this one and make it your own but 
that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, and so now since we are around to the back of the GLE, the first thing I want to mention with this one, and Mercedes-Benz has been doing this a lot with their vehicles, and I actually love it. All the way to the top, there is no shark fin antenna whatsoever. Traditionally, with just about all other SUVs out there, you'll find that, but it's such a clean look without it, in my personal opinion, so I like the clean look. But anyways, as always, starting up top, you got a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper. You have LED tail lights that does come standard across the board, so you gotta love that. We do have an optional towing package back here, so I did want to mention that to you guys. You got some chrome accenting found at the bottom portion of that rear bumper as well, and dual exhaust outlets with fake chrome tips. And the reason I put it that way is because the real exhaust outlets are tucked away underneath of the vehicle. There's chrome tips. They're actually filled in with plastic. So Mercedes-Benz swapped that up, man. I don't like the fake look, but maybe that's just my opinion. But nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. It's been now since we are around to the back of the GLE. When it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is actually a hands-free power lift gate that does come standard across the board. So you 100% gotta love that. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 33.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 74.9 cubic feet. That's plenty impressive there. Got some cargo lighting back there, of course. There are some chrome-plated tie-down anchors. Got grocery bag hooks. There is a nice cargo cover as well. Little bit of netted storage there to the back corner. There's a 12-volt power outlet. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire. You do have a little bit of storage found to the right-hand side of that spare tire as well for maybe an ice scraper that's what i would probably do but i liked that and of course in typical mercedes fashion all of the cargo area is finished in a nice carpeted finish so typically you do not get that so i like that but now let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear seats first thing i want to mention though there is an optional third row seat package that goes for twenty one hundred dollars we don't have it so i'm not going to show it but it's there for you second row legroom though comes in at 40.9 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had there plenty of space for me rear ventilation of course coming standard you got dual rear usb charging ports there is a rear center armrest with cup holders that does come standard as well four zone climate control goes for 860 dollars if you wanted both rear passengers to be able to set their own temperatures and then heated second row seats goes for 580 dollars if you wanted that as well but one thing i think is missing for the second row passengers is some optional rear window sunshades i think that would have been a nice little addition there but then making our way up to the front seats power adjustable front seats with four-way power lumbar does come standard memory settings for both driver and passenger also coming standard and those passenger memory settings that is rare you typically don't find that even on luxury automakers heated front seats coming standard leatherette seating coming standard leather seating goes for sixteen hundred and twenty dollars but one of the cool things about the interior colors is they actually offer some really nice colors they offer a red leather if you wanted that and they also offer a yacht blue leather. That's the one that I would personally go with because you never see blue interiors these days. So that's pretty sticking cool. Ventilated seats are going to be available. Uh, Multi-contour front seats with the massage function that comes with the pinnacle trim. Again, $5,300 for that one. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it wasn't bad. I mean, seats are plenty adjustable. You do have some horizontal seams as opposed to the vertical seams, which are traditionally more comfortable, but overall it got the job done. So I don't have any issues there. To take a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable. That does come standard. It is leather wrapped. If you wanted a heated steering wheel, that goes for $450. And also wanted to mention there is a wood leather combination package available. That goes for $600 if you wanted that one. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys this nice heavy duty key here. Got lock, unlock, the button to pop the rear tailgate there. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone in the brake and press that black engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so 
Once started up, as far as the gauges go, it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and it is absolutely amazing. There's a home button on the steering wheel. If you were to press that, that gives you a bunch of different um, kind of looks to the gauges, including understated sport, classic, navigation. There's even an off-road mode here since we have the GLE. So that is so freakishly nice. I love these looks. You can do that full navigation look if you wanted to. I personally like understated because I think it goes well with the, uh, the purplish ambient lighting that we got going on right now. So Overall, I think the gauges are done absolutely amazing. Of course, it has everything up there because it is digital, uh, digital speedometer, your tachometer speedometer, if you wanted that set up. There's a how many miles you have left until you hit empty, to outside temperature, the list goes on. So everything you could possibly want on a gauge cluster. Probably my favorite gauges uh, out there right now, quite honestly. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. If you wanted a panoramic roof, that goes for $1,000. We got that option. Really cool fade on and off interior lighting. I always like playing around with that Mercedes. Not every Mercedes has it, but the GLE definitely does. So I like that. Auto dimming rear view mirror with him like controls uh, for up to three different garage doors. And that is pretty stinking cool as well. Dual zone climate control coming standard. Like I said earlier, four zone climate control is going to be available. Wireless phone charger that is located just in front of the uh, couple cup holders here. And so since I mentioned it, cup holders right behind there, there is a bunch of wood trim kind of uh, surrounding the touchpad controller for the infotainment screen. I'll get more into that in a little bit. Then within the center armrest, there's actually a pretty deep storage amount in there. You got a USB charging port as well. So nothing wrong with that. And by the way, several different types of wood trim are available for the GLA. So I always like that because a lot of times you have that new car smell when you hop in a new car but with the GLE because of the wood trims you have that new home smell I've always said that before if you've ever built a home you know what I'm talking about I love that smell it smells so dang good in here 64 colors of ambient lighting also coming standard Mercedes does ambient lighting beautifully uh, typically better than every other manufacturer out there minus that new Sony Affiliate car which is absolutely insane but also have very nice aluminum speaker covers by Burmester we're going to test out that sound system them here in a little bit really the only two things i would change about the interior here is this uh sh stock shifter it kind of feels very black plastic cheapy so i wouldn't mind if they finished that with a more high-end finish or just completely change the shifter look in general and the black uh plastic push button start um most other luxury automakers will finish that in like uh either a silver plastic or aluminum or just something more special than just a matte black plastic so those are my two constructive criticisms but i Honestly, they did an amazing job with the interior quality here in the GLE, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. And so as expected, you will find a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display to match the 12.3 inch gauge cluster. That makes sense. Uh, you also have that touchpad controller and buttons down just behind the cup holders. So that's another way you can control what is on there. Nonetheless, Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard up there. You got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. Factory navigation system is up there as well. You can control your climate control information. Got driving uh, statistics up there. There's actually some off-road statistics. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna tap that real quick. That is pretty stinking cool. Showing elevation, uh, tire pressure of each individual tire. That's pretty stinking cool. And a nice little graphic too. So I like that. You can also check out your radio information up there, of course, as well. So when it comes to the sound system, uh, we have a 13 speaker Burmester sound system. It comes with 590 watts and a nine channel digital amplifier. So I believe I loved this sound system last year. So let's test it out again. Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Nothing like blasting EDM at 9 a.m. in the morning, let me tell you guys. Yeah, that, I love that sound system. Plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. I said that last year. I love the aluminum speaker covers. Burmester did a wonderful job with the sound system in the GLE for sure. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the GLE in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. It's pretty darn high definition as well. You also got that surround view monitor there to the left, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. Let me start with my favorite part 
IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. It doesn't get any higher than that. That's Volvo quality right there. So you gotta love that. Extremely safe SUV here. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. You got a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Active brake assist, a driver attention monitoring system, cross wind assist, blind spot assist, Parktronic, which will freak you out when you first try that one, but it works beautifully adaptive braking technology and a parking damage detector via the mercedes me app so if you're inside target and somebody crashes into your car like happened to me then it is going to tell you and then you can kind of run outside and try to stop them before they do a hit and run so yeah that happens but anyways overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the gle 350 excellent interior quality i love that a blue interior is available for this one as well but i really love the wood trim they do that beautifully and it definitely contributes to the amazing smell in this thing great driving dynamics the braking feel is amazing in this thing the ride quality the lack of cabin noise it's such a serene cabin it's plenty quick as well so i love that there was no delay to the acceleration so overall driving dynamics were amazing sound system is amazing uh, as far as room for improvement goes i'll give you two things maybe this thing can get very pricey very quick so like i said the starting price was 64 i think i said and this one is listed at 71 and it can go up a lot higher than that trust me and uh the other thing is something about the interior i would change although the interior quality is amazing i would add some rear window sun shades i would change up the plastic push button start and the matte black plastic kind of shift lever as well those are the three things i would change on this one overall amazing suv let me know what you guys think of the gle 350 in the comment section below but that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media stuff if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe with the bell notification button if you're in any car reviews that is what we do on your channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold